So, um, so Nina is um, joining us um, from India. And um, uh, she also uh, gave a talk about monsoons last week. Thank you so much for that. And um, um, she's at the, um, please remind me of your institution. I just lost it. At Pune, that's right. Um, at the Indian Institute um, of Science, Education and Research. Um, thank you so much for uh, stepping in. Nina. We're looking forward to your talk. Thanks, Judith. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for this uh, talk. Uh, so today I'll talk about uh, equitable leaves. So I think in the first talk itself, uh, we found that how important those are for uh, the tropical predictability. So today I'll talk about the modulation of convectively coupled Kelvin waves by the NGO over different geographical domain. So uh, my screen is visible, right? Yes, it's not yet full screen, but it is well visible. Okay, I can make it. Right. Okay, so uh, what we are looking at here is the symmetric raw by background spectra of OLA in the tropics. So you can see the significant variance associated with the MGO, and uh, and there is a very large variance associated with what we call convectively coupled Kelvin waves. So those two modes are the most dominant uh, modes of tropical convection and explains a lot of propagating disturbances in the tropics. So here you can see the coherent spectra in OLR and E850. Uh, so those also show the convectively coupled nature of these two modes of variability. So the first and the second largest modes of uh, tropical variance is explained by these two modes, MGO being in the interseasonal time scale uh, planetary scale wave number one to six and convectively coupled Kelvin waves can what we call uh, is much more uh, like in our wave number two to 10, shorter spatial scale and uh, higher frequency three to 20 day uh, time scale. We can uh, identify that. So uh, the properties of these waves, uh, what, how it separates from the MGO is mainly in how uh, in the meridional wind component and uh, MGO is a planetary scale tropical mode of variability and propagates slowly. Uh, CCKW is more equatorially confined and its propagation is much faster. And the shorter spatial scale and higher frequency uh, time scales as we each with it. So MGO is known to modulate the CCKW activity. Several studies have reported that. Uh, some studies have also indicated that a residue of MGO convective activity over the East Pacific is what initiates the convectively coupled Kelvin waves, uh, which propagate to tropical Atlantic and Africa. So, uh, and the synoptic scale and mesoscale disturbances uh, activity is also modulated by the MGN envelope. Uh, and likewise, the convective phase of CCKW is also known to modulate the synoptic and mesoscale disturbances over East Pacific, Amazonia, and Equatorial Africa. So this, this the interaction between these very close by uh, tropical scales of variability is uh, very important. Uh, so here we are looking at the MGO variance and the CCKW variance, the Kelvin wave variance uh, uh, in OLR. Uh, you can see that uh, there is significantly large variance associated with the MGO with the warm pool and uh, the Pacific is a very strong center for uh, CCKW activity along with the, like in general we have very strong activity along the IPCC and uh, uh, you can, uh, one of the earliest studies by Roundy uh, in 2008, they explored the MGO modulation of CCKW over the Indian Ocean domain. And uh, they found that the CCKW convective phase is higher when uh, there is active phase of MGO. And there was also found to be a slower, relatively slower propagation uh, during MGO convectively active phase, implying uh, the role of convection circulation coupling. So we are now focusing on total ge three different geographical do domains, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean, and trying to see how the MGO is modulating the CCKW activity over the three different geographical domains, along with like trying to understand the phase of MGO, whether it being the MGO being uh, convectively active, convectively suppressed, or uh, the MGO being weak, how the CCKW activity is affected by that. So let's identify 
for the CCKW events uh, used the filtered uh, indices for MGU and CCKW over these domains and based on whether it crosses a threshold for a certain number of days, uh, we identify the total CCKW events like for three consecutive days, if the CCKW index falls less than minus one, uh, then uh, we can call it as a CCKW event. And if it occurs together with the MG index being less than minus one or greater than minus one, or uh, with having a very low value between 0.5 to minus 0.5, then we categorize it into whether the CCKW is occurring with MGU convectively active state, suppressed state, or weak amplitude state. So this is the basic statistics of CCKW events uh, what we obtained. Uh, so here you can see among the three domains, the highest number of CCKW events are observed over the Pacific. And uh, of which about like 37 percentage of the CCKW events over the Pacific occur when the MG amplitude is weak. A uh, higher number of events are associated with the MGO convective active state as compared to the MGO suppressed state. And between the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, about like 40 to 41 percentage of the CCKW events occur when the MGO amplitude is strong, either being in the convective suppressed or active state. And uh, similar to the Pacific, you can see that over the Atlantic, there is a greater preference for uh, MGO uh, being in the active state, the CCKW activity is more when the MG being in the active state, but uh, such a big difference is not observed, or it's more kind of an opposite preference over the Indian Ocean domain. So there are uh, differences in the CCKW activity over the different domains, that is one important factor. And uh, there is differences between or this preference for the MGO state, whether it is convectively active, suppressed, or whether MG amplitude is in general weak. So we'll try to explore the dynamical features um, associated with these uh, Kelvin waves over the three domains. So this is the composites based on the different events, whatever, whatever we have identified. And uh, this is based on unfiltered OLR and wind anomalies. And overlaid on top of it is like the convective phase of space-time filtered CCKW, uh, just to indicate that the, the presence is there. Uh, so the, it's based on the events, like around those events, whatever we have identified, there's the pattern. And we can see that uh, the, the Kelvin wave pattern is discernible uh, in the unfiltered anomalies when the MGO is weak. So when the MGO signal is there, it kind of overpowers the pattern in the unfiltered anomalies. That's the reason we cannot make out the Kelvin wave structure there. But we can uh, clearly see that the, the method captures the CCKW events and the associated MGO events. So well, let's move on to look at how the mean spatial temporal structure of the CCKW evolves along with the uh, MGO active suppressed and weak states. Uh, and uh, this is done by a lead like composite of those events. Uh, so we can see the CCKW propagation in all the three cases. Uh, the main difference what we can say is that the CCKW propagates more eastward. It's uh, more evident in the home molar diagrams uh, that more eastward uh, the propagation when the MGO is convectively active. And uh, the observed higher amplitude of CCKW when the MGO amplitude is strong uh, clearly indicates that there is some linear interaction between the MGO and the CCKW. So this is over the Indian Ocean. Now we move to the Pacific Ocean. So here we can see there is a off equatorial structure uh, of the Kelvin waves as it moves eastward. And uh, the SACKW structure during weak MG amplitude is similar to that of the uh, theoretical Kelvin wave. And there's a negligible meridional wind component associated with. And now we'll move on to the Atlantic. So things are a little bit different over the Atlantic. Uh, the spatial and temporal scales of CCKW is different. It's shorter spatial scale and higher temporal scale uh, CCKW are found over the Atlantic. And uh, it propagates the CCKW convective events propagate slower when the MGO is uh, convectively active over all the three domains, not here. So we'll summarize on the phase speed of this waves over the three domains for the different MGO 
active, suppressed, and weak phases. So we can see here that in general, there is a faster propagation of uh, 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 skeleton waves over the Atlantic as compared to the other two domains. And comparing between the MGO active, suppressed, and weak phases in general, when the MGO is weak, uh, there is a faster propagation and there is a difference in the phase speed during MGO active and suppressed state. So what could be the possible factors uh, which might be influencing the CCKW phase propagation? Uh, one could be the differences in the convection circulation coupling strength over the different domains and over the different states associated with the MGO. And there could be the differences in the vertical structure of the waves itself. And third factor we, we examine is the gross moist stability over the different domains. So we'll see how these are related to the CCKW phase speed over uh, the three domains. So first, uh, we are looking at the coherent spectra of convection and circulation, uh, lower level convection and circulation. So it is a good metric for quantifying the convection circulation coupling in the wave number frequency space. So we have used the coherent square values and averaged over the CCKW time scale at each pressure levels, and that is what is indicated. And uh, the larger coherence is observed. So these are the set of uh, states which is corresponding to the strong emission amplitude, which is associated with the larger coherence values, which indicates more stronger coupling. And uh, convection circulation coupling is weak when the MG amplitude is weak. So there is some role of the MG amplitude or there is some influence of MG amplitude and the total convection uh, circulation coupling and the phase speed of the waves. Uh, but it doesn't really explain like why there is a variation in phase speed across the different domains. And then going to the next uh, factor uh, we are examining is the vertical structure of CCKW. So here you're looking at uh, the relationship between phase speed and vertical structure is given by uh, this relation. And you can see the is in the temperature anomalies associated with the CCKW. And in the Indian Ocean as well as the Pacific Ocean, uh, we can see the strong second baroclinic vertical structure, uh, which with a very large, significant tilt, uh, and it is much larger over the Indian Ocean domain than that over the Pacific. But over the Atlantic, we don't observe that it is more kind of a first paraclinic vertical structure. And uh, there is a higher vertical scale, uh, which is consistent with what we observe as the higher phase speed over the Atlantic Ocean, uh, Atlantic domain. So, so this indicates that the vertical structure of the waves over the three different geographical domains is different, which can have an influence on the phase speed. Uh, but it doesn't really like give an idea about like why, how it is different for the different MGO states. So the third factor we are looking at is the uh, normalized GMS or gross moist stability index, which is used as a metric for measuring um, the MGO moist mode. Uh, so you can use it for the tropical, other tropical moist modes as well. So we check the NGMS values, the vertical component of NGMS uh, is uh, calculated and we can see the vertical component of MGMS is having a very strong relationship with the phase speed. So it's for the different MGO states over the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean are indicated by these dots. And you can see that there is a strong relationship between uh, the phase speed of these waves over the different domains for the different MGO states and the value of the vertical component. So low, lower the value of the, or less positive the value of the word NGMS indicates a, sh a more uh, slower phase speed of the waves. And it is it means that it can be used as a uh, in the, a measure of a better metric for the MCCKW phase speed, uh, phase speed variation over the different domains as well as for different MGO states. So this is uh, one of the studies which we are uh, exploring and soon to be submitted. Um, and I'll summarize, uh, we have looked at the CCKW convective phase variation, how it is uh, influenced by the different MGO phases over the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, amplitude and phase speed of the CCKW both get modulated by the MGO activity. CCKW convective phase propagation uh, is slower when the MGO is convectively active. And among the factors 
Uh, we have examined the vertical structure, the convective circulation subcoupling, and the NGMS. And it is NGMS is found to have a strong linear relationship with CCKW phase uh, for the different MGO states over the different domains. And stronger convection circulation coupling is observed when the MGO is active. So the observed differences in phase speed and differences in spatial temporal scales over the domain, such as CC to KW is a dispersive disturbance. And uh, NGMS might be a useful metric for assessing the properties of uh, CCKW in climate models, uh, just like we use it for uh, the MGO. So I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much for this detailed view on the relationship between NGO and CCKW. Um, any questions? So I have a question. Would you tell um, us a bit about um, the implications for predictability over the Indian continent in these different phases? Uh, predictability, sorry, I, I forgot, I didn't. Uh, the predictability, um, yeah, um, over the Indian continent in those different phases. Uh, okay, so the activity, the convective Kelvin wave activity over the Indian Ocean is quite strong and there is a difference as compared to the Atlantic and the Pacific as to come when uh, it is like over the suppressed state, it is more active, convectively coupled Kelvin waves is more active. So on subseasonal to seasonal time scale, I think this would have uh, uh, like a uh, importance uh, in terms of like how the small scale to like next larger scale uh, variance is distributed like uh, so if you can understand how the MGO is influencing the CCKW downstream and into like synoptic or meso scale disturbances I think that is very crucial for the uh, like you know organization of like what we have convective systems over the Indian Ocean which is very crucial for the Indian subcontinent. Thanks very much. Um, Anish. Yeah, thanks, Nina. It was really interesting, especially yeah, the connection between MGO, CCKW, and um, NGMS, like the instability coming from um, the moisture mode, right? So the question was related to the Pacific versus the Atlantic and the NGMS plot you had. Um, towards the end, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. So here, I was wondering how strong is the coupling between convection and dynamics um, in the Pacific versus Atlantic? Because the MJO itself, the convective part of the MJO signal um, stops around the date line, right? Whereas the Kelvin wave, it does propagate through the East Pacific and Atlantic. Does the convective signal of the CCKWs over the Atlantic, um, does the strength of that resemble what's over the Pacific? Uh, so the convection circulation coupling over the Atlantic and Pacific, uh, we don't see much difference. Uh, like it's, it's there, like, you know, there is strong coupling over the Pacific and the Atlantic. Uh, uh, for the CCKW, um, but not for the MGO. Uh, so uh, how like this is something which we will have to explore further to get a clearer idea about like how the CCKW is influence is different over these two domains the, and how it is influenced by the convection circulation coupling. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, Thanks. Other questions? Yes. So I don't see any hand uh, right now, unless I missed something. And can I check if Sergey is back? Um, so- um, I am. Oh, you are. Oh, that's great. All right. Um, so are you ready, uh, prepared to give your talk now? Okay, so before Sergey goes, let's, uh, let's thank uh, Nina again. Thanks so much. For this uh, for the talk, relevant to uh, monsoons, more more relevant to monsoons. Uh